A congressional committee held a rare hearing on Capitol Hill today on the subject of UFOs, with members and witnesses alike pushing for more government transparency on this issue. CNN's Tom Foreman has more on the story for us. Give us the latest, Tom. This really was quite a hearing, Wolf, with plenty there for conspiracy theorists, those who believe there are other beings out there trying to contact us. And if you listen closely, enough for skeptics, too. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. My gosh. Some things out there we don't know what and we ought to be concerned. We were primarily seeing dark gray or black cubes inside of a clear sphere. That was the message from all the witnesses about unidentified anomalous phenomena, UAPs. Do you believe UAPs pose a potential threat to our national security? Yes. You're talking something that can go into space, go someplace, drop down in a matter of seconds, do whatever it wants and leave, and there's nothing we can do about it. Nothing. Backed with videos released by the government and their own first-hand observations of what are more commonly called UFOs, the three retired military men, two former Navy pilots and a former Air Force intelligence officer, described mysterious somethings, objects, lights, with astonishing capabilities. These objects were staying completely stationary in Category 4 hurricane winds. These same objects would then accelerate to supersonic speeds, 1.1, 1.2 Mach, uh, and they would do so in very erratic and, and quick behaviors that we don't, I don't have an explanation for. And when the witnesses started talking about what they claim they've been told, it went even further, albeit with no proof in tow. You said that the government has alien bodies or alien species. I have to be careful to describe what I've seen uh, firsthand and not in this environment. And have you seen any of the bodies? That's something I've, I've not I witnessed myself. This is huge. This is worldwide. The whole spectacle was enough to have some committee members openly accusing the government of a cover-up. It is unacceptable to continue to gaslight Americans into thinking that this is not happening. While others, like the witnesses, are calling for more open reporting procedures for anyone who sees anything. We can't be afraid of asking questions, and we can't be afraid of the truth. If one thing came out of this was a commitment from several committee members to say, or a push from them to say, yeah, the government needs to be more transparent about what we do know and what we don't know. What we did not get in all of this, though, is any real proof. What are these people seeing? And is it something that is more science or more fiction? Wolf? Tom Foreman, thank you very much. Two people who heard that UFO testimony today, Republican Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna and Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz, both of Florida. Thank you both for joining me today. Uh, Congresswoman Luna, while two of the three witnesses claim they've seen unidentified objects in the past, a lot of what was said today was based on what other witnesses had told them. So why should you or the public believe what they said? Well, I want to start by saying that this really all started as a series of events. Uh, initially, myself, Representative Burchett, and Representative Gates were actually denied access to information at Eglin Air Force Base in a follow-up um, of whistleblower testimony to Representative Gates' office. And upon pushback, I actually saw with my own two eyes evidence of UAPs at Eglin Air Force Base. But also, too, it's important to note that um, both Grush as well as the other witnesses were not only extensively vetted, but also some of the most, I'd say, viral videos that have come out, the gimbal and the Tic Tac video, were actually filmed by two of those three witnesses. And then referencing Grush, we actually requested a skiff so that we could hear that uh, privileged information, and we were denied access to that. And I think that Representative Moskowitz is going to be penning a letter to ensure that we get access to that skiff for that briefing. Well, to that point, uh, Congressman Moskowitz, no government officials testified at the hearing today, and one of the witnesses alleges that the government is covering up its research on UFOs. Do you believe that to be the case? Uh, I do, and it's not that they didn't testify because they weren't invited. No one wanted to participate. That hand was extended to multiple agencies, and they, they refused to participate. And so, listen, there's no doubt that we're fighting for greater transparency here. I mean, that's what this is about. I mean, you have these pilots who are decorated veterans who have interacted with things that they can't explain that are beyond the technology that they were flying 
where you're talking about speeds that you know the human body would not be able to sustain g forces that they would not be able to sustain and so you know when you hear that you hear that from reliable witnesses under oath in congress you know that matters and so when you hear from grush that obviously in his previous job you know he worked with people who have worked with these uaps and that there are weapons programs that are unsanctioned off the books that's the point of congressional oversight. The point is for us to ask those questions, to pull the, that thread. And if we have to get into a classified setting to do it, so be it. But this is really about disclosure. We understand there's national security implications. No one's trying to jeopardize that. But that can't be a shield that the American people don't get to learn the basics. So Congressman Moskowitz, sticking with you, what are some of the bipartisan efforts that you're working on to be more, to have the government be more transparent on this issue? Well, well, number one, first of all, we got to protect our whistleblowers on this. So there could be whistleblower uh, legislation that comes out to protect them. I think, obviously, uh, talking about getting Grush into a skiff so that we can hear the classified information, getting the document he submitted to the inspector general. He referenced that several times today. I mean, there's some talk on Capitol Hill about maybe doing a select committee. Obviously, that would be up to, to the Speaker of the House uh, to do that with subpoena power, and we can start subpoenaing people. I mean, so, so these are some of the things that are, are currently being discussed. Obviously, we just came out of, uh, out of that hearing. Members are already starting to talk about the next steps. And that's what's important here. What's important is that this is not just a one-day hearing, that we have follow-up. And I think you hear from you know, uh, Congressman, Congresswoman Luna and others that this is a bipartisan, bicameral, nonpartisan mm -hmm. uh, sort of stuff that's happening on Capitol Hill, which, by the way, is somewhat unique. And that's why I think uh, you're going to see it move faster than some other issues. Yeah, it is notable to hear that some of these witnesses were just nervous about testifying for fear of a stigma being attached to them from what they saw or what they heard. 